A 2 plus 2 degree is a four-year university degree where the student spends the first two years in a college and then transfers to a university and completes the third and fourth year at the university. And we found that they're common in many jurisdictions and they're, they're a great kind of degree for many students who aren't wanting to or perhaps aren't very close to a university to, to actually start their degree. So if you geographically are, are much closer to a college, it, it's a way that you can stay at home for the first two years and then transfer when you're a couple years, years further into your program. It's also a great opportunity for uh, students who prefer a different kind of instruction uh, in the early part of their education. Many students prefer the smaller classes that are more typical of a college program, uh, a little more personal environment in many colleges. And so in lots of ways, this works out well for the student. Uh, and it's also a good opportunity for students to save money, and, and sometimes that's attractive for the student as well. All right, as a pathway in Ontario today, it's not very common. We compared this to uh, a number of United States in the United States. Uh, American states, some of them rely on it for more than half of their total university degrees granted. So in other words, in some states, more than 50% of the students who earn a university degree actually started at a college. Now, there's quite a range of variation across that. Uh, for our purposes, you know, the point is not to reach a particular target, so much as to say, if you create this as a pathway, uh, the evidence that we found says it does work, it does work for many students, and it could be an alternative for some students who either uh, aren't living uh, in a university community today or who for a variety of academic reasons might be better off to start in a college. What's common in Ontario today, or increasingly common, is universities and colleges coming to arrangements where a student can complete two years at college and then move on to university and complete a degree. But it's very seldom a two plus two arrangement. Often it's two years at the college and then three years at the university, sometimes three and a half years at the university. This changes the, the attractiveness of the arrangement a great deal, both for the student and potentially for the people who have to pay for it. Uh, if a student is paying five, spending five or five and a half years in post-secondary education in order to get a four-year university degree, uh, clearly there are implications there in terms of the student's tuition and the, the student supporting himself, herself, while they're in school. Uh, it also has implications for the government's share of this in terms of the government having to pay for five, five and a half, sometimes longer education in order for the student to get a four-year degree. So one of the things you want to focus on here as much as possible, the gold standard is a two plus two arrangement, trying to make sure the student does enough uh, learning in the first two years that the student can successfully transfer and then complete the full four years in, in a four year period. You know, we found a lot of really interesting practices in different jurisdictions that I think Ontario can learn from. If you look at California, for example, California actually has extra seats in third and fourth year university so that when students from a college apply to transfer, there are actually extra seats to accommodate those students. And so it gets over one of the hurdles that stands in the way of students effectively transferring. Uh, if you look at Florida, Florida actually has a common uh, database of student credits, student transcripts. So a student can go to one database and even if the student has attended three or four different institutions, look at that database, say, okay, here are all the credits I've accumulated during my post-secondary education and it will actually tell the student, this is what you need to finish a degree. Here's where you can go to get the credits that you're short. Uh, we looked at the state of Washington and also Kentucky where the universities specifically designed two plus two arrangements where the university portion of it was specifically for students who were in a field of study that universities don't normally teach. So let's say you're a student, you take a vocational program at a college and then you say, oh gee, in order to move into management, I actually have to have a university degree. Well, the university actually designing those two years to pick up from wherever you, whatever you learned as a two-year student in the college and say, okay, here's the extra management you need, 
here's what you need to know about running a large organization, here's some of the liberal arts things you might be short, and so the student actually has a custom designed two years at university specifically for the student who did not take a, uh, an academic subject at the college level but took a, a subject that was more, much more career oriented. So there are lots of practices that people in different jurisdictions have devised in order to make it easier for students and it helps students complete a degree and for so many careers that, that's the stepping stone then to be able to move on to a higher level, level in your field. Okay, when we look at the success of students in 2 plus 2 programs, we really have to break this question in half. First of all, the evidence that we found says that when a student completes the two years at college and is admitted to a university, those students often perform just as well as a similar group of university direct entry students. So they have similar graduation rates, similar grade point averages, sometimes a little bit better, sometimes a little bit less. Uh, but you know, many jurisdictions where the 2 plus 2 students after they hit university are just as likely to complete as a student who, who is in third year university uh, as a direct entry student. The hard part is making sure the student's well prepared to make that transition. A number of jurisdictions we looked at, there are significant attrition rates amongst the students who start at a college and say they want to transfer to a university uh, many cases there's a lot of attrition before the student actually gets to that stage. So we looked at you know, what was some of the evidence about that. Uh, often that's associated with the student attending college on a part-time basis. So a student, you know, nominally it's a two years at college, nominally it's two years at college, but in practice the student might be taking three, four, five, six years to complete those two years of study. That's clearly associated with uh, less likelihood of, of completion and making the transition. Another factor that seems to come into play is that many of the systems we looked at, the colleges were effectively open entry institutions where anybody who applied was admitted. That's not actually how Ontario's system is run, so there's some difference there. Uh, a third difference is at least some of the literature was pointing to problems in terms of students uh, preparation in secondary schools. So if a student wants to start college but has uh, a huge need for remediation in languages and in mathematics, that was also associated with a student not getting up to the point of being able to transfer to university. So you need to look at that end of the equation very carefully. Once the student qualifies to transfer though, the students perform very well.